All right, welcome everybody. So um, <clears throat> the purpose of this video is to go through an entire process of an LTM design um, to help you with your senior project. Um, I had a couple videos pre-recorded of this and I was fighting with them a lot and there were a couple errors in them and I was trying to fix the errors by annotating over the top. And after struggling with it for a while, it didn't work. So I'm just gonna re-record this. So it should go smoother re-recording now. I fixed some of the parts that had issues, so. Um, so again, we're just going to step through the whole process of an LTM design from start to finish. Um, and then um, the, the goal is to basically not have any gaps, to sort of start at the beginning with setting up preferences and at the end with a finished PCB that we can send off to a fabrication facility. So, um, so to begin, um, we're going to just start by opening LTM. So, um, So this demo is for LTM 19. So in the lab, some of you are using, or in the labs are LTM 18, and actually it looks like they have a new version of LTM 20 out. There's just no stopping the, the tide of changing versions of LTM. So, uh, so we're not gonna try, but the version I'm using is 19. Um, the main difference you'll see between 18 and 19 is 19 sort of has this explorer, so I think um, or explore and components are split up. I, I'm not sure if it's still called if it's called Explorer. Um, it might be called Vault in 18. Maybe it's called Explorer in 18. I can't quite remember. So, um, but um, that's that sort of thing. I know is is one of the biggest changes they had version to version. You might find other little tiny ones, but for the most part, 19 should be pretty close to 18, and it should be pretty close to 20. I think 20 adds a couple new features that are more advanced that we're not going to go over in this tutorial. So to begin, I'm going to um, go over setting up preferences. I know I've had lots of videos that go over this that are designed for students at Western Washington University, but um, we're just going to go over it anyway. Um, so we're going to load a new preferences. Also part of this is I want to make sure everything is um, the same for people who go through this process on their own. So we're going to load we have a, a pre-made preferences file, and we're going to load that preferences file. We're going to go to the R drive, Altium. Um, I don't always figure out where this thing is. It's always named a little bit weird. We're going to load this new preferences file. Sorry I'm talking quiet, but my family's asleep and I'm at home now, so. Okay, load preferences. Now, if you don't have permissions, if you don't have permissions on the computer you're using, um, you're probably going to want to, um, or you're probably going to have to, well, I guess I'm going to have to do this anyway. They do these annoying sort of click behind boxes here. Sometimes you gotta, if it looks like it's stalled, you gotta pull those boxes out of the back. I don't know, hopefully they fix that in 20. But it's kind of been a persistent problem. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna, it says we may need to restart LTM. That's probably what you would do if you were doing this at home, so let's just go ahead and restart LTM here. Okay, so we have, um, well, it looks like we had one little document that was left open um, from a previous messing around with this, but pretty much we have a blank slate here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, we have saved um, an example, sort of an initial sort of project setup. So I'm going to go to 
20 projects. So this is that folder for that new, uh, that folder that I created to start your project. So we're just going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it back in my computer, just in my documents on my computer here. And then we can just go ahead and so um, for you, you're, you, don't have, you don't have the ability to modify things on the R drive if you're a student at the university. So you're definitely going to have to make a copy and save it locally, or actually you probably want to save it on your user drive so that you have access to it on any computer. Um, and we're just going to open that project up. So again, this is the, I made a copy. If you try to open up the version of this that's saved directly on the R drive, you won't be able to modify any of the files because you don't have modified permissions on that drive. So this is a blank, um, a blank project. The board is blank. If it ever loads, man, I hope this computer doesn't run slow. This is gonna be a long video. This computer runs slow. Um, the schematic is also blank. Um, now, there's a couple things I'm not gonna do in this video. I'm probably not gonna go through changing the sheet title on things. Um, it's not that tough to do. There's other videos of it. I'm, probably, I'm also not gonna go over creating and modifying parts. So creating parts, modifying parts is not included in this video. We will in this video grab components out of um, libraries and we will also um, grab components out of vaults, um, but we're not gonna be creating them on our own. Um, so the goal of this design that I'm going to do is it's going to be a USB-C connected, powered, bat rechargeable battery um, so it's going to be a rechargeable battery. The battery recharging is powered over a USB connection. It's going to be a USB-C connection. Um, the battery is then going to feed, <coughs> well, the battery is going to be switched. So the output of the battery is going to be switched. Um, and it's going to feed into a um, boost converter. And the boost converter is going to boost that up. For my design, it's going to boost up to 5 volts. Your design might be, a lot of people use um, 8 volts or 10 volts. So you might have to boost a little bit higher. The biggest difference is if you're boosting higher, you're probably you're gonna have you're gonna have to use a different different values for the resistor divider that you create. Um, but there's equations in the data sheet for those. Um, so to start, let's grab some components. So let's first of all. Um, so basically, the components tab gives us local components in local libraries. Um, and the Explorer tab gives us vault content. So Explorer gives us access to content that's stored you know, on the cloud, on the web, on a separate server. Um, components um, or um, local, local devices, these, these are sort of just locally stored library files. Um, <clears throat> if we, you don't have a folder here, I think this might be different, 18 versus 19. Usually there's a way to load files. In our case, if we want to load a library, we have to go to the preferences, and then we need to choose. So it looks like I don't have, because I did the new default, um, I, I, I redid the um, preferences. I don't have this the library that I need anymore. So I'm gonna go install a new library. And it did already pop it up, but it's under R drive, Altium Libraries 320. I'm just gonna grab both of these and um, you only need the schematic library when adding the library, but I'm just going to add both so we can through the library tab at least view these. And then hit click close. And now we can see, so we have a couple of these default libraries up here, um, but now we also have the 320 libraries here. And again, it's, it's the schematics that we really want if we're grabbing parts to go into the schematic document. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add that USB-C connector. USB-C connectors here. I'm going to right-click it and just click place. I can also drag and drop. There's a million ways in Altium to do a bunch of different things. Uh, one thing to note, as I'm moving this thing around, I'm noticing, um, and I can zoom in so you can actually see this, I'm noticing it's really moving with fine resolution. It's not snapping to a grid. It's really nice to have good grid snapping when you're doing, especially when you're doing schematics. So um, to do that, I'm going to hit the G key. 
And if you look down in the bottom left corner, that that grid colon, yeah, you might have to, this, I kind of have a high resolution screen, so you might have to set your resolution kind of high on your YouTube video to see this. Um, but it says grid 50 mil right now, 100 mil, 10 mil, 50, 100. I always set it to 100. I always want the coarsest grid I can, and the reason for that is one of the biggest schematics mistakes people make is um, they have a wire that looks like it's connected, but it's not. So it's very easy to have a wire that's close to another pin, close but not actually connected, and it, it, it might look like, especially when you're zoomed out, it might look like that wire is connected to the pin, but it's not, and it's caused errors for, in people's designs. Just that sort of thinking of pins connected. So I usually like to start my designs sort of top left corner, just like I'm writing a book, you know, if I write a book. And I'm gonna plop that down there. And then I hit escape. I hit escape to stop setting down parts. A lot of, so escape is usually your friend in Altium for getting out of something or undo or, or, or stopping something. Um, I've seen a lot of people, one of the things people do a lot in Altium is they'll start dropping parts and they don't realize it. For instance, when, when these dialogues go away, um, sometimes it, they, they'll sort of slowly disappear and while they're disappearing, you have a part selected with your mouse over here and some people start clicking in here while they're setting a part and they'll drop like four or five parts. So to avoid doing it, move the part over, drop it, and then hit escape. Um, so um, this is a USB-C power only connector. So this is a USB-C connector, but it only has pinouts for the power um, uh, connections. So we have this pin seven here. This is for the shield so this is this is a pin that represents the connection to the physical shield shell of the usb connector we're going to connect that to ground but you can leave it unconnected if you really want to um, then we have v bus this is going to be our five volts that actually comes from the usb bus um, ground which is going to be our ground reference from the usb bus and then there's these two pins cc1 and cc2 cc1 and cc2 are um, <clears throat> pins that were that are added for the USB-C standard that allow the USB-C standard to determine the orientation of a plug. So USB-C, one of the features is it's a reversible connector, uh, but the system still needs to know, even though it's reversible, which way it's actually connected. So the CC1 and CC2 pins can help it do that. There's, a, there's other features, like depending on what resistance you have on CC1 and CC2, it can sort of give transmit a little bit of information to the host to the usb host but we're not going to do any of that the only thing you need to know if we want to use this as a power connector we should add 5.1k pull down resistors to those pins cc1 and cc2 so let's go ahead and do that let's add some resistors <clears throat> my default status is my default is just to use 0603 surface mount components that's the easiest for me those that's small enough to be relatively compact but big enough to be fairly easy to do by hand. So um, to find that, we're gonna go to components and we're just gonna go to miscellaneous devices. We're gonna look for um, res3. And when we go to res3, we can scroll down and it has an option of several different footprints. It might look slightly different on the version you've got, but we wanna make sure we have that J0603 connected. That's gonna give us the 0603 footprint this and then I again I right click and I go place and I am going to just drop um, one here and one here and hit escape and now um, um, I'm going to change the values on here from 1k to 5.1k and again that's Changing, changing the values of a part here doesn't do anything to change the physical board design. The only reason we change these values is it's an indicator to the person looking at the schematic of the design. It's an indicator of what values are actually needed. It's also something Altium, if you're populating a bill of materials, Altium will sort of organize your different components. If you have the same component but it's labeled with a different value, Altium will show those different values. So, um, but it's really just informational. Um, for whoever's ordering or assembling, it's not, it's not, doesn't actually change the physical footprint at all. This is still going to be an 0603 resistor, no matter what, no matter what resistance value we change, we set it to. So now I got to click that, I don't know which one I should click, so yeah, I just click the resistor value behind it. And if you click something and there's two things overlapping right where you clicked, Altium gives you a choice of the two. It's not always clear which one you need to click, but 
If you click the wrong one, just do it again and pick the other one. 5.1K. Enter. Okay, so now these are labeled. Um, so these should be pulled down to ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this power port, the ground power port. I'm going to connect it to this one. And you know what? I've got a ground pin here on the USB, so I'm going to label that as ground too. What am I doing by dropping these ground pins? When I drop these ground pins, um, all I'm doing is I'm labeling this pin as the signal ground. And in this case, the signal ground also has this fancy little, you know, ground symbol associated with it. But really, all this is a net label. I'm just saying, I'm telling Altium, this physical pin needs to be connected to this net called ground. And Altium doesn't really know much about the network ground. It doesn't know what a ground is. It just knows it's a name. It's GND, and that's really all the Altium software knows. So it's up to us to determine anything that's ground. We want to label it with these ground pins, and all that does is it tells us hey, all of these things have got to be connected together. Why did this thing drop a, a blue ball here and this one didn't? Because this part, one of the ways we cheat in LTM, if we have a physical thing that has, if we have a physical footprint that has multiple pads that need to be connected to one signal, a lot of times on LTM people will overlap pins. So in this case, we have two pins, pins one and six that are overlapping. So when we connected this ground here, it actually connected it to two overlapping pins. It puts the little, the little node ball there to tell us that we have more than two things connected right at this junction. Whereas here, we just had a ground signal and a resistor, so there, there was only two things connected, so it didn't show the little node connection there. It's going to now, because I'm about to connect this one to ground as well. So when I click on place wire, and draw that wire between there, and then hit escape. Now, here at this node, because we have more than three things connected, more than two things connected, it also drops that, that dot. Um, so I also want to label this VBUS. Well, actually, I also I'll ground the sh I'll ground the housing of the USB. So I'll put a ground here too. Hit escape. And then um, for this VBUS, actually, I don't really need to label this yet um, because this VBUS. Um, I could label it if I want to, but this is just going to feed directly into the charge regulator for the battery. That's all it does. It just powers the battery charge regulator. So for now, I'm going to kind of probably just leave this alone. Um, so what I can do now is move on to the um, charge regulator. Um, if I want to, though, um, sometimes it's good to annotate a design right now. So annotation is the process of adding numbers to each component. So if we have an identical component like these two resistors, right now these are our question mark. That's that's basically saying they don't have a, a number associated with them. They just have a, a prefix R. Um, and this is also P question mark. So if we want to annotate this, LTM is going to sort of follow a certain pattern and every time it sees a question mark, basically it's going to toss in a number that's unique. So this would be P1, this would be R1, this would be R2. But if we, if we annotate this now, it's going to guarantee that R1 and R2 are both associated with this initial part that we created. So whatever, we can go ahead and annotate this thing now. To do that, we go Tools. Sorry, we go Design, uh, Tools, Annotation, Annotate Schematics. Um, everything, you should be able to just automatically go Update Changes List and accept changes and execute changes and close okay so now again yeah it labeled this p1 r1 r2 um, there are advantages sometimes to not having these annotated so if we leave everything unannotated then one of the things is the parts if the parts don't have a number, if we copy-paste them, they won't automatically index that number, which can sometimes throw you off. So, so there are advantages to leaving it unannotated. You can always undo annotation. You can always go back to um, Tools, Annotation, and you can do re Reset Schematic Designator. So you can always go back and, and um, undo that. Another fancy one is Reset Duplicate Schematic Designator. So if I am copy-pasting a lot, and I get a lot of resistors that are all called R4 or R3, 
I can just reset only the resistors that are duplicate. So I can reset the values that are duplicated and then re-annotate and then it'll give each one a unique number. So that's something that happens in Altium a lot. Okay, so moving forward, let's put our charge regulator down here. So I'm going to go back to components. I'm going to go to 320 parts. Oops. Schematic library, and I'm going to go to LiPo charge controller. Okay, so I'm just going to right click place and drop that perish. And escape. So um, I can look this part up. So if I go to recently saved here. So if I go to the data sheets, and again, this is R drive, Altium, Altium projects, data sheets, battery charge controller. So this is mostly in Chinese, and I don't read Chinese at all, but I can read pictures just fine. So um, I can tell pretty much that with this is takes an input of 4.5 and 6.5 volts, which is great because USB is going to be 5. Um, I can tell that it has a battery connected here and that it says 400 milliamps, but it has a program resistor. So typically with these chargers, the program resistor determines the current flow. If I scroll down, I can see that, yeah, I can see lots of example circuits here. So in this case, this example circuit, I think it might say exactly, yeah, so it looks like, um, yeah, we have a table here of charge current. I'm not going to push it. I'm, this is a small device. It'll probably have a small battery. So I'm probably just going to charge this thing in 100 milliamps. Um, so that, that takes a 10K program resistor. So if we go back to Altium, um, so one thing we can do is um, connect a, well, first of all, we got a ground here, so we might as well just connect the ground. Um, <coughs> we have VCC, so VCC is the power input. Now, remember, that's going to come right from the, the USB bus. So I'm going to just connect that directly there and escape. This charge pin is what provides a charge light. So um, usually you can put uh, uh, an LED here and when it's actively charging, it's gonna pull this pin down low. So if you have an LED between VCC and this charge pin, it'll turn that light on while it's charging. So let's do that, let's add our light. So we have an LED. So we have an LED part. Let's place that. Like this. And then we need a resistor in series with that. So we're going to go back to miscellaneous devices. Go down to res 3. Place that. So we're going to have one resistor here. And then we, we also have to have this program resistor, so we might as well do that now. So I'll just plop a resistor here for the program resistor. Um, okay, so um, we gotta tie this resistor back in to this charge pin. And it's, it's not the prettiest way to do this, but it'll work. So again, um, this charge pin is high impedance when this is not charging, and it's it gets pulled low, it gets pulled down to ground when this device is charging the battery. So VCC is 5 volts, this gets pulled down low. We're going to have 5 volts here, so if we have an LED, we need to limit current to that LED through with a resistor. So if this is a blue LED, it's got a forward voltage of, you know, 3 volts or so, which means it's going to be 2 volts dropped across this resistor. If we want, say, 5 milliamps of current through that, it's going to be... Um, you know, what, 
2 volts to get 5 milliamps out of current out of 2 volts it's going to be 400 ohms, 400 ohms or so. You know, 1K is probably fine. We can just leave this at 1K. I mean, ultimately, if we change it, we change it. Based on our data sheet, though, we want this one to be 10K. So let's make that 10K, and then um, we also have to get a ground here. So one of the things you can do is if you've already got a ground, if I just grab this ground, it just disconnects it from the pin. There's two things you can do with LTM that's really nice. One thing you can do is if you hold down the control button and then pull this ground, it keeps the ground connected. So control and then click and drag will keep your elect electrical connections. If you do shift and then you click and drag, it'll make a copy. So if you, if you hold down shift and then click and drag, you'll drag a copy, which is really handy. The downside is, look what happens if I do shift and I click and drag this resistor. It did a copy, but because I was clicking and dragging R1, the copy it made it called R2. The problem is R2 is already a resistor that exists in our design, so we don't really want to do that. So let's get rid of that. Um, all right, so let's connect this resistor here. And um, now the battery. So. The battery is probably just going to be some standalone battery for our device. Usually, though, um, you want to have through holes, some sort of a header or jumper to connect your battery to. So, because the battery is going to be an off board device, I'm going to use an off board connector. So, to connect the battery, I'll probably just use, I'll probably just go to components and go miscellaneous connectors now. And then scroll down to header two. And if you look, header 2 is just a 2-pin header. It's a standard dip, 0.1-inch space, 2-pin header. So I'm just going to right-click this and go place header 2. And then I'm just going to drop this here. And so one of these pins is going to be the high side of the battery, which is going to be right here. And the other side is going to be the low side of the battery, which should be connected to ground. And we'll tie the ground there. Now, I don't have to label this, but because this is going to show up in my actual board design, it might be a good idea to label this as something. So we're going to click this net label and click on this signal. Double click on the name, and we'll just call this like V. Okay. So and basically this means when, when I'm looking at this on the actual board and I'm looking at the signal names, Rather than being called, you know, VR1739 or whatever, something, some weird letter and number, it's going to be called actually the name of the signal. And I might want to add one here. So I can just call, I can also add one here. And we can escape and we'll just call this my USB voltage here. All right, so let's just stop. We, I think we have enough of the circuit done now that um, we might just want to go ahead and, and assemble these parts of the circuit right now. So let's do that. Um, and actually, probably what I'll do is I will we'll assemble this part, and then I'll stop this video, and then I'll move on to number two, because I'm a little worried that if I get too far into this video, this thing's going to break like the other videos did. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save. The next thing I'm going to do is i got to make sure everything's annotated. So this is not fully annotated right now, so I'm going to go annotation, annotate schematics, update changes, accept changes, execute changes, close. And now everything is nice and annotated. And now here's, I, usually I like to save again, just because I never trust software. And then the, the, after we have our schematic design the way we like, what we're going to do is we're going to update the board. And updating the board is going to take any changes to the schematic and it's going to transfer those changes over to the board. So let's go design update PCB document. And we got green checks, which means everything updated on this side, okay? And so here's all the components for what we've created so far. 
So I'm going to drag these into our active area here. Um, so, so I'm going to hold down Control and do the scroll wheel. I'm going to right click, right click to pan back and forth. Control scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Scroll wheel just scrolls up and down. Um, <clears throat> so. I am going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of move these into sort of the same order they are in the schematic, because the way they're laid out in the schematic is pretty much how I want them on the board as well. So if I go back to the schematic, we got the USB connector, then those resistors, the VUSB going over here. So let's just move the USB connector. Oop. Let's only select one. Let's move the USB connector. And immediately, just like in the schematic, I'm noticing this is moving very fluidly. And that means it's not really snapping to a grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a grid to something reasonable. Actually, I'm going to set it to something really big. Because for right now, when I'm just moving parts around, I'm OK with it being a fairly coarse grid here. So I set it to 25 mil. And now you see this thing sort of pops into place a little bit more. It's kind of snaps as it's moving. So we're going to set that down. Go back. And so these were resistors R1 and R2. Let's find resistors R1 and R2. Let's move the rest of the stuff out of the way. Okay, and now we can see these air wires here. The air wires are showing us where we need to make electrical connections. So let's move this one. I'm gonna press space to rotate. Let's move this resistor here and this resistor here. And that looks like it's going to be fine. It looks like we're going to be able to make an electrical connection fairly easily there. Um, and now let's check this one. So my VUSB pin is here, and it needs to connect to my USB power. So maybe I'll rotate this a little bit. Looks pretty good. Um, then we have the LED. So. LED and red and R4. So I'm going to take R4, oops. Take R4, take the LED. And R4 is, looks like it's on this pin here. That's maybe there ish. Looks good to me. And DS1, this is the, little, the actual LED for the charging light. I don't really care where this thing goes, but I probably want to be able to see it. So the way I'm going to do this board is I'm going to have all the electronics on one side and all the LEDs on the other side. So one side is going to have all the guts and, one, and the other side is going to have all the fancy lights. Um, so probably I'm going to want this LED to be on the other side of the board from where my stuff is. And to move a part to the other side of the board is fairly easy. All you have to do is click the part and go edit, move, flip selection. And when you go flip selection, it flips it to the other side of the board. And you can take a look. So if you want to hit the 3 key, the, the, the key 3 is going to switch you into 3D view. So the, hitting the 3 key, and then again, my right click pans back and forth. My control right click zooms. My shift and right click rotates stuff around. So. I look right now, that LED is now on the bottom of my board and all the other stuff is on the top here. You can also, oh, it's getting a little crazy. You can also tell that, uh, abort, okay. You can also tell that because the pads here are blue. So the pads here are blue and that indicates that these are metal, bottom layer metal. So blue pads, blue in general is bottom layer metal. Red is top layer. So basically, all of these pads are metal on the top layer of the board. The blue is metal on the bottom layer of the board. So I'm just going to move this you know, here for now. I probably want it to be near the connector. So when you plug the connector in, you want to actually be able to see close to where you plug the connector in that it started charging and that the light turned on. So this is not its final location. But the question is, why can I just put the LED right where this USB connector is? Well, I can put the LED there because, again, the LED is on one side of the board, the USB connector is on the other. The only thing I can't do is anywhere where there's a, a connection, like a through hole like this, if there's a hole that goes from one side of the board to the other, well, obviously you can't have that touch. You can't have things on either side of the board overlap with those. And if I tried to make it overlap, Altium would, would warn me. Altium would put up this, this ugly green warning thing saying, what are you doing? Okay. So that LED is there, and if I want to go back to the 3D view, 
whose orientation I completely messed up. I can sort of flip this thing around and see it back there. So, okay, so I can see that back there. So, let's though, oh, I really messed this thing up. I don't even know what I'm doing now. It's just gonna be a reset view. I'm going to press the 2 key, and I'm going to go back, and let's put this battery connections here. And again, ultimately we're going to take the battery and we're going to solder those wires into these connectors. But for now, it's just a, a connector. And R3, I don't remember what R3, oh yeah, R3 limits, I don't know what R3 does. Oh, that's the current limiting resistor. I'm going to go back and check. Yeah, R3 is that charge resistor, so it sets the charge current. So. And there's its pin right here. Oh, this one's probably good, just like that. It's probably fine. Now, one thing you might notice is these names are overlapping the part right now, which kind of looks pretty bad. And we could move these around, um, or we could just really not worry about them for right now. So I'm not too. I'm not usually ever too worried about the the, the names on these things. All right, this is all looking pretty good. Let's, just so we're complete, let's just route this for now, or let's, let's route most of this. Um, so when I route this, I'm going to focus on my big stuff and my little stuff. So my big stuff is anything that carries a lot of current. So to route the stuff that carries a lot of current, I want to make sure I'm gonna have, I have a fairly large conductor for that. So I am going to, first to connect the grounds and the VUSBs, I am going to... Um, I am going to use a pretty big pipe. So I'm going to click wire here, interactively route connections. And I'm just going to start connecting. I'm just going to connect all these grounds together here. I don't have to. This is just this is just the shield. But when I click that, it, it, it started me routing with kind of this dinky wire. It's actually a pretty big wire here, but I want it bigger. I'm doing power connections. I want to go as big as, or a little bit bigger here. So I'm going to hit the tab key. And then it automatically selects the size here. So I'm just going to go up to 28 mil. That's a little bit better. So I'm just clicking, hitting escape. Clicking again, clicking again, escape. Clicking again. Just making connections here. It's kind of satisfying the way it's going. So I'm going to connect these two grounds together up here. Okay. Might as well finish off the ground connections. Now this is not my best work here. This is pretty ugly actually, but it's okay. It's gonna work out just fine, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm actually not gonna connect this LED in this right now. I'm not gonna connect all this stuff yet. I'll, I'll deal with that later, but um, um, all the LEDs on the other side, I'll just connect at a later time. So let's connect the power now, so. So you see I had left some space in here to, to route this power connection. That was on purpose. And then go over here. And then let's connect VBAT. The VBAT is also a power connection. Hold on, I, I forgot about this little ground over here. Let's connect those grounds up. Okay, the rest of what we have to connect, these are all signal connections, so they actually don't need the fat pipe. So we can go with a slightly small. I usually like to do at least 10 mil for the signal connections, but they don't have to be, you know, these big gigantic pipes like the higher power connectors need. 
Um, so we'll just go back and I'm gonna start crowding this, but when I start going, yeah, it doesn't, it's probably, it's not gonna hurt it to be that thick, but I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's go down to 12. Go down to 12 mil. Hit escape. Let's wrap this connection. Let's wrap this connection. Okay, now it looks like right now the only thing left unconnected right now is this LED, and I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna we'll do the LEDs all later on. So let's call it good for this video, and when we come in when we come into the next video, we're gonna start. We're going to add on to this. We're going to go from the power connector to a boost converter. Um, and we'll do that in the next one. So hopefully this video saves okay, and hopefully you end up actually seeing this one.